Hey, this is Bart from Tactical Canine Solutions, and today I want to talk about playing ball with your pooch. I am known for my two ball game, and today I want to give you a little side inside my kitchen and um, show you in detail um, how I play and how empowering that is uh, for the dog. So in, uh, in concept, what I'm doing in my game, I implement a lot of different um, markers. I cues, uh, for instance, so the dog knows exactly where the ball is going to be and what is going to happen with the ball. Um, whether the ball is going to be thrown forward or backwards or left or right, or that he can bite it out of my hand or we're going to play a nice game of tug um, or that he just needs to let it go and um, just wait. Um, before we go into that and we're going on the field and actually go play with the dogs, um, let me talk a little bit about the different uh, balls that I have here on my table. And there's only a couple, um, but these are readily available um, on any, any site, any uh, pet store, Amazon, uh, Chewy, or your local um, pet store or working dog store. The ball that is used uh, most of the time in um, the working dog lines uh, or the sports uh, world is this rubber ball on a string. Um, I have used these balls for many, many years and I had success with them until I discovered um, the chucket on a string and this is a far more uh, superior uh, uh, toy. Um, full disclosure, I am not sponsored by any means uh, with the chucket, by the chucket company. Um, all the toys that I buy, they bought, are bought with my own money. Um, so I can be completely biased. So um, the reason why I do not like uh, um, these balls um, or I like them less uh, than these balls is when I'm going to present um, the ball um, when the dog can actually uh, bite it out of my hand. Um, the disadvantage is this rope is very wobbly and as you will see on the field um, if I do presentations, if I am going to drive my dog up a little bit, if I'm going to get, get him more excited, this ball is literally, literally going to wobble all over the place and it's going to make it much more difficult for the dog to actually target and latch on and predict where that ball is. Where with the chuck it, the, the ball is much stiffer and it's easier for the dog to get that prediction of targeting. Um, the other uh, thing that I like is the handle. It's, uh, it's awesome to play tug uh, with. I can literally uh, stick in a couple fingers my hand and I have an awesome uh, tug game. Um, then we have uh, these balls. Um, I do sometimes use them if I just want to uh, goof off a little bit. Um, but my training balls and my, you know, my favorite and preferred uh, ball to play tug of uh, or to play with my dog is this uh, ball on a string because I can throw it, I can hang it, I can, um, you know, I can toss it in the air like I do with a normal ball, but I also can uh, hold on to it and actually play uh, tug. So, um, like with anything the dog puts in his mouth and is going to uh, chew or uh, bite on, size is important. Um, size matters in this particular case. So what size am I going to choose uh, for my dog? Again, um, for a big dog, you want the large balls and for really toy dogs, you want maybe a medium. This is a medium size uh, ball. Um, the reason why we want a little bit thicker ball is, uh, you know, a couple reasons. A for safety, if, uh, if you toss this ball in the air or you toss it forward and the dog uh, grabs it in flight, there is a chance that this ball will get stuck in his throat. So here's a picture of uh, an example uh, that a ball got stuck in his throat and the veterinarians need to uh, remove it surgically. Um, so uh, size matters in this case. The other reason is, you know, when we're doing bite sport, a little bit uh, larger toy will um, you know, require the dog to uh, open his mouth a little bit more and that is going to give positive effects eventually in his bite work because the dog is not being lazy. Because if he's used to you know, grabbing a small toy, eventually that's going to be conditioned. Hey, I only need to open my mouth 
um, you know, just a little bit in order to, for me to access what I want to the ball and hence he might become lazy in uh, bite work. So the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to charge the mark YES and um, when I release the mark, um, my dog will go forward. Yes. So I do this a couple times. My dog comes back. Good boy. Good boy. He drops the ball. Yes. He gets the other one. So when he comes back and he uh, comes, come on, buddy. Good boy. Good boy. He drops the ball. Yes. And I'm going to throw the other one. The, the other exercise that I do with the dog, it's teach the, teach the dog that my ball will go backwards. So also I need to condition that to the dog. Um, so every direction that I throw the ball, I have a different cue. So my dog eventually knows um, where the dog goes. And that's very uh, uh, useful. For instance, when I'm healing and we have a forging dog, if I say Avaya and then throw my ball backwards, my dog will know that the dog goes uh, backwards. Get your ball, buddy. Avaya. And I'm going to throw the ball backwards. Come on, buddy. Avaya. And I throw the ball backwards. Avaya. And I throw the ball backwards. So I'm going to condition my dog uh, to do that. Go get your ball, buddy. Go, go find your ball. Come on. Yes. And place. Yeah, so, and I'll do that for Lynx. Good boy. Good boy. Up. And I'll do that for rechts. Good boy. Lynx. Good boy. Rechts. Good boy. Avaya. Good boy. Yes. basically the concept of two ball game and we need to uh, practice this a lot and charge these uh, markers a lot before we are going to use them in obedience. Um, the other uh, marker um, that I have is bite and my dog knows how to bite. The second, the, the other one is let's play and let's play means I'm going to tug on him. Yeah, we're gonna play tug and when I play tug what I need to do is literally show my, my neutral side to the dog and make sure that the dog is winning. The dog needs to have fun, yeah? It's, it's very easy for us to overpower the, the tug work and give the dog a losing feeling. What always needs to happen is the dog gets a winning feeling and gets the most uh, pleasure out of tug work. Good boy. Up. Relax. So after my dog is relaxing, what I'm going to do now is show you how to drive up the dog without... Okay. So I'm not going to get out of place. I'm going to show you my straight lines. Fight! And then I'm able to play with my dog. Good boy. Up. Relax. So I'll do that one more time. Okay. Bite. And I'll show you the bite command from uh, this side. So you'll see that. Bite. And there you go. And I've got my, my, all my variations in my dog play out. Yes. Now I can go have fun with my dog. The ball. We need to be completely uh, neutral to the dog. So what I like to do is have a presentation to my dog um, in such manner that I present the smallest side of my body, which is my side, and not square up because if I'm standing like this in front of my dog, I'm a lot more dominant, I'm a lot more intimidating, 
and it's going to make targeting to this ball a lot more difficult. Um, so the, the other skill that we need to uh, learn is to drive a ball, uh, the dog with the ball and proper drive work is holding the ball in front of you and moving it in a straight line. So um, what a lot of people do is bring the ball to their body and then when the dog is in flight, the dog is, will actually hit uh, the body and the, the game becomes very uncomfortable. So practicing proper drive work is, um, is important. What I like to do is tie uh, a rope between uh, two trees or I go to my fence and I literally practice to see if I can move this ball in a straight line rather than going, you know, everywhere or drive. I see a lot of people drive, drive like this, um, which is very hard for the dog to follow this uh, ball. So proper drive work. We're going to hold the ball. The dog is coming and I'm going to extend my arm in a straight line. The only thing I need to do then when my dog is that way is turn and drive again. So I don't need to make a lot of body movements as you can will see later when I do this with a dog. I can literally stand in place and turn and have my dog miss and drive him up. When I'm ready for my dog to catch the ball, I'm going to hold the ball still and my dog is there and I can then either decide to let go or I can transition into a, a game of tug of war. And so when I play a game of tug of war with him, I will play that game on my side and I will demo that too with a dog. So let's take this guy and you see the difference. If I move that ball just in a straight line with the same speed, you see how much motion there is in the ball and you see how that, that target for the, the dog is already shifting. So that's going to make it a lot more difficult for that dog to uh, bite and it, uh, it will also increase the chance that your hand is going to be bitten because of the ball flying behind your hand um, or on the side or this, this shit happens um, with, uh, you know, with all the discomfort that you get from that. So the next step is uh, to ramp it up a little bit and we are going to um, condition the dog that he can actually access his ball when it's on the field. So that's very useful when we're going to do obedience. So um, the requirement is that you have a dog with a downstay. So I'm going to tell my dog, Ligan. I'm going to put my ball on the ground. I'm going to walk back to my dog. Yes. And he's going to be able to get his ball. Good boy. Good boy. Let's try something different. Out. Mulligan. So when our dogs are a little bit more advanced, the next application is that we can um, have a ball, uh, for instance, on the ground um, and send the, ball, send the dog to the ball um, while we are healing, for instance. Um, so if I take my doggy for a heal, Morgan! I can call Avaya and my dog, good boy, let's play. And my dog can run to the ball. Yes! Good boy. Once we have developed a two ball game, we can actually use this ball for training. So for instance, we are in the middle of developing uh, healing and I want my dog to give a reward placement 
I can I can choose out of all these different rewards placements to um, maybe adjust position in healing. So let's give this a is a this a try. Fulgen. Bye. And you see my dog comes uh, straight up. So um, in case my dog has a problem forging all the time, having that reward placement uh, above is going to eventually eliminate my dog from forging. Fulgen. So another technique is Fulgen. And throw the ball uh, backwards if my dog is crowding me. So that way his reward anticipation is a, a left circle behind me and eventually he's going to start positioning in his body that way. Oh, yeah. Yes. If my dog is um, lagging and he's always behind, having that reward position to the front will have reward anticipation to the front and eventually lagging will uh, be reduced. So once that two ball game is conditioned very well, we have a lot of tools that we can use in our obedience, in example, uh, for healing. So another good use for this, uh, for this game is going to protection work. If, for instance, we need to um, uh, call our dogs off. So my call off is trained in two ball. Um, I condition the bite uh, command uh, so hard that he knows that if I yell the B-I-T-E, the bite command, he's going to get uh, a very empowering game. And it's basically the most fun that he's ever doing. And uh, that will help with my uh, recall. Yes. So there you go. So that, that my recall command here is a pre-cue sometimes to bite. So that recall is very strong. Let's see that again. Yes. Here, bite. Um. So important steps of playing two ball is charging the, the ball, throwing it forward, throwing it left, throwing it right, throwing it backwards, drive work and bite work. So we looked at the basics of uh, playing two ball. We looked at um, the initial steps, uh, charging the marks, yeah, um, getting the, uh, the, pri uh, the primary reinforcer of him chasing the ball attached to a secondary reinforcer, which is our cue. Yes, via links rex. That's what I use. You can throw strawberry, banana, whatever, whatever cues you uh, want to use. Um, we also saw the power of that um, two ball game um, when applied to training behaviors in bite work. I love them to uh, train the call offs for ring sport and for personal protection. Um, no need for uh, any aversives, uh, callers or e-callers. I've, I've been very, very, very uh, successful um, with that game for those uh, particular behaviors. Um, of course, there's many more applications and much more to learn. Um, we've not uh, talked about the proper way uh, of playing tug of war. That's a completely separate uh, video. Um, I also uh, have not touched how to play tug with other toys, like with a tug toy or a pillow. That's also a completely other video. So those videos will uh, come in the near uh, future. But for now, go out there, go have fun, uh, practice these uh, skills. And um, I'll see you in the next uh, video. Give me a like, uh, give me a thumbs up, subscribe and um, keep training.